Okay, we're ready, Meg. Okay. Good morning, Phoenix Union. Um, my name is Megan. I am an advisor at College Depot. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, have heard of College Depot before, but in case you haven't, uh, College Depot is a free, full-service college access center located at the Burden Bar Central Library in downtown Phoenix. We help with college applications, financial aid, FAFSA, scholarships, CSIS, profile um, scholarships and more. But today we are going to talk about um, a very important step to creating your FAFSA, which is something called the FSA ID. It is a username and password to log into the FAFSA to sign it electronically. Um, and it's something that is connected to your social security number. So please, please, please students, as we created today, definitely write it down in a safe place. You'll need it for the next two to four to six years of your education. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so students, so as you know, the FAFSA has made some significant changes this year. So historically, it was open October of every student senior year. But this year, with the changes that have been made, it will not be open until December of 2023. So we're not 100% um, sure of the release yet debt release uh, date yet, but we will let you know as soon as possible when it's open. But fortunately today, students, you can create the FSA ID today for yourself and for your parents. So we are going to get started. So just so you know, students, in addition to creating the FSA ID, you will need um, your parents' 2022 income tax return, but have no fear. It's going to be transferred from the IRS data retrieval. Um, um, historically, that was the former name. Um, it will basically be transferred, so it'll go directly from the IRS to the FAFSA, um, hopefully smoothly. So we are going to be begin. So um, as you know, students, this is for all students that are starting in the fall of 2024 at their um, respective college or university or community college. Um, so we are here to help you get this FSID created. Okay, James, can you go to the next slide for me? Great. Okay, students, what is an FSA ID? Like I mentioned, it is a username and password connected to your social security number if you have one. So eligible uh, non-citizens, U.S. citizens, um, permanent residents that have a social security number and an um, alien registration number are able to create an FSA ID. If you do not have an FSA ID, have no fear, students. Um, USS student can do the CSS profile if you're going to Arizona State University, University of Arizona, or the Northern Arizona University. You can create the CSS profile, and we at College Depot are able to help support you at College Depot with creating that CSS profile. So, like I mentioned, the FSA ID is connected to your social security number. So it is one account that you need for the next two to four to six years of your education. So please, please students, as I mentioned before, write it down and have hold it in a secure place. So basically what will happen is not only will you start with the FSA ID, right? But then your username and password will be created. It's matched with the Social Security Administration and various other uh, government agencies to um, determine that you are a perfect match. Um, it is used every year for renewing your FAFSA every year. And it is a um, like I said, it is a it is a permanent document that is connected to your social security number. So please keep it in a safe place. OK, James, you can go to the next slide. OK, so students and, um, and then for the parents that will need to create this as well, please use an email account that you have access to after graduation from high school. So keep in mind all of your Phoenix Union accounts will be disabled after you graduate. So please use a personal email address. Gmail, iCloud, Yahoo, etc., to connect it to your FSA ID. Sometimes, um, students, the um, the FSA ID is already taken, so um, to have no fear, just create a new one. Um, um, you know, in terms of 
uh, modifying your your username and then the password as well like i said is sometimes a little tricky so please be um you know mindful of the password you're creating it can include your it cannot include personal information so it can include your birthday social security number first name last name etc here's a brief slide about who needs to create an fsa id so like I mentioned for you guys today, all of you are the students that are completing this application in the future. So if you have a social security number, you will create an FSA ID. If you are, if at, you know, the one change that is being made um, with the FSA ID and FAFSA process is that parents um, will now um, be able to all create FSA IDs, whether your parents have a social security number or they do not. Here's a, just a brief table about who needs to create the FSA ID. Um, so if you live with one parent, um, um, then uh, who file a joint return, just one parent needs to create, create the FSA ID. If you have married parents who filed separate tax returns, both of your parents will have to create an FSA ID, for example. And if you have more questions or, or um, you know, need clarification about do both of my parents need to create one? Do does just one parent need to create one, et cetera? Feel free. I'll I'll put my contact information in the chat at the end. You can always give us a call if you have any questions about this uh, FSA ID process. Okay, James, you can keep oh, going. Hold, hold on oh, one second yeah. and and stick on the screen. Yeah. Uh, so for kids right now, they're gonna they're gonna do their own FSA ID. They're probably going to go home and encourage a parent uh, or maybe both parents are going to need to create their own FSA ID. Because you won't have the screen in front of you, we encourage you to take your phone out right now and take a picture of this screen and the next screen. Yes. Uh, the next screen is what we want you to take a picture of if your parent is undocumented and this screen we want you to take a picture of so that you know do you need one parent to have the FSA ID or do you need or do you need to create an FSA ID for both parents this is different this year so we want to make sure that you do it right thank you Terry that's a yeah, great reminder okay so yeah so James will hold on this slide just for a second so the students can take that picture as well as the next slide too Okay, Tara, I think we can probably go on to the next one, right? Absolutely. Okay, so yeah, James, if you can go to the next one. Okay, so students, um, as um, both Ms. Haggerty and I reminded you, this is the, the way that parents that um, don't have a so social security number, when it comes time for them to make it tonight, um, they click on this little box at the very bottom, and then they can create their own FSA ID. So like I said, it's the same uh, process, obviously, minus the social security number. As a reminder, all parents now, whether it's one parent or two parents, have to create an FSA ID to complete the FAFSA for the 2024-2025 school year. But like I said, if you guys do run into problems, I will put my contact information in the chat. Please reach out to us at College Depot for us to assist both you and your parents. So we'll hang back just for a minute. This is the uh, first page of the FSID process. Um, so keep this in mind. Um, this is something to take a picture of as well. I think we're probably good because okay. they would have already had their camera. Great, okay, James, can you keep going for me? Great, okay, students, all of you, this is the first step in creating your FSID. It's studentaid.gov. So please go to studentaid.gov. There is a option that says FSA ID create. Um, that is where you 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 begin your application process. So you we need your first name, middle name if you have one, last name, uh, date of birth, your social security number. Please use the information that is on your social security card if you have it in front of you. Um, and your uh, or your birth certificate. This is your full legal name. If you have two last names, please put as much as you can on the um, FSA ID. 
Um, if you have a space, that's OK, too. So we'll give you a minute to do this process. This is the first step in creating that FSA ID. I, I have one other thing to say, too. Sure. So if your parents are undocumented, uh, that little box that we just showed on the last screen, that is is not going to appear until December. Yep. So if your parent is undocumented, they are going to have to wait until the new FSA ID and the new FAFSA uh, rolls out in December. So uh, if you're a student and you are eligible to fill out a FAFSA, you're going to create your FSA ID today, right now. But if your parent is undocumented, they can't create their FAFSA until the new form comes out. And there's going to be about a five day delay between when uh, they can create their FAFSA or their FSA ID and when uh, they can actually use it uh, to sign your FAFSA electronically. Great. Thank you, Terry. OK, mm -hmm. students, so we are going to keep going um, in, just in the interest of time. So the next part is one of the most important parts. Like I mentioned, students, this is the the FSA ID username and password. This is one you create for yourself. It, it is connected to uh, your social security number if you have it. Um, it is what you use for the next two to four to six years of your education. Keep in mind, you can never create a new FSA ID. You can only recover it. So um, please write this down in a safe place. So you create a username and a password, and there are um, details about what information is uh, needed in your password. Um, it's a certain amount of characters, lowercase, uppercase, special characters, etc. Uh, definitely connect it, this to, like I said, to your personal email address, uh, Gmail, iCloud, Yahoo, etc. Do not use your Phoenix Union school address. So we'll give you a moment to create your FSA ID. This sometimes takes a little bit of time just because sometimes um, the username you think is available is actually already taken. So just um, spend a few seconds to work on creating that FSA ID for yourself with your username and email address and password. And Mrs. Haggerty, if you're out there, can you just uh, give us something in the Q&A or uh, text us and just let us know, are we going too fast? Are we going too slow? Um, how's our pacing here? can't quite tell, so let's go ahead and move to the next one. Great. Okay, students, this is the next part of the process. Uh, putting in your uh, personal information, your mailing address. Um, so this is the next step. Keep in mind the majority of communication with uh, FAFSA and the federal student aid is usually via email, but sometimes they do mail forms to you um, via regular mail. So please put in your contact information, your mailing address, cell phone number. Um, if you have an alternate phone number, put that in. And um, at the bottom, there is the part about, um, uh, you know, if you the communication as well. So definitely put in your your contact information, um, mailing address, etc. So. So this is your personal mailing address as a student. This is where you put in your phone number and your uh, physical address. And Megan, we're getting a thumbs up. We're ready to move on. OK, great. OK, James, thank you. Next slide is communication preferences. There is 
the option to do by email, by uh, postal mail. Like I said, the majority of the communication most students usually choose is email. It just makes it faster for you to find out if you have to make any corrections or changes, but it's a personal preference. There's also the optional communication if you want by text message or email or both. And the final uh, question is what language preference do you want your FAFSA and all the communication to be English, Spanish or or other. Um, keep in mind whatever language you choose is how it will be in the future. So um, uh, most students choose English, but it is a personal preference. OK, so I think we probably can keep going, James. The next part is doing the challenge questions. So students, this there are four challenge questions with drop down options for you. This is one of the final ways to recover your account. If you forget your username and password, um, you can answer some challenge questions. Keep in mind, not only will your parents do this, um, but you will also do this too. So please put four questions down that you can remember, write down the answers also in a secure place. Um, they are there are a handful of questions that you can choose from and then you write down the answers in the box below. Uh, these are the uh, four challenge questions that you have to create. Um, as a reminder, this is one of the last ways to recover your account if you need it. So we'll give you a minute to create those challenge questions and those responses. And just make sure that you choose questions that where the answer cannot change. So that uh, when you when you are looking at a challenge question in the future, <laughs> maybe a year from today, maybe three years from today, when you're looking at your challenge question, if it comes up because you're having trouble remembering some things, just make sure your answer is going to be something that you that's solid that you can't possibly forget. I will drop my information in the Q&A, like I mentioned students. Um, this is our contact information at College Depot. If you have further questions about the FSAID process or just um, college um, planning in general, you can contact us. I'll put our main phone number as well as my work cell phone. And my email. OK, that is that is the those are the best ways to reach us uh, students. So like I said, this is the first process and first step to uh, doing your FAFSA. So I think we're OK probably to keep going. OK, the next step students is to review, confirm and agree to the term. So this is a great opportunity students if you have any um, edits or changes that need to be made to you your FSA ID, this is the perfect time to do that. There are different boxes where you can review all of your information and make changes if needed. Um, if all of it looks correct as you go down the page, then you have to confirm that it is all correct and agree to the terms um, listed below. Um, this is one of the final steps to create this FSA ID, so um, definitely take a moment to look at all of this. You're almost done. Yes. So everybody should see um, at the very top, it should say step six of seven, and you can see the green bars, only one bar left. All right.
right, I think we're ready to move. Great, thank you, James. Okay, so one of the final steps is the verification of your email and phone for account recovery. So as you can see, there's a gold verify button um, below the phone and email. Please um, verify both of your, um, your email address and phone number. Um, if for some reason your phone number, um, or sorry, your email, yeah, your phone number doesn't work, um, you can verify via email, but um, usually it's more secure if you verify both the phone number and email. Um, once you click on the verify button, it will, there will be a code that is sent to your mobile phone number um, and email, and then you just enter that code into the um, website. This is one of the final steps to creating that account. So we'll give you a moment for the email address. Sometimes you have to click on send me a code more than once. Um, um, it usually I've heard and seen three or four times. Sometimes students have to send that code to their email. Hopefully you all have access to your personal email on your mobile phone or computer. Um, and this is the opportunity to verify both that email address and phone number. Megan, if I mark both um, and it um, and I say finish, is it going to send me something right now? Um, the you mean the, the actual application, the email like FSAID confirmation or? Yeah. Um, so usually I, I in the past and when students do this, I've never seen like a formal email that says congratulations, but there usually is a final like page that says your FSA ID has been created on this website. OK, great. Yeah, All so right. so yeah, maybe proceed James to the next slide. OK, so as a reminder, students, this is the first step in creating that account for your FSA ID and your FAFSA. So congratulations to all of you. Um, this, um, as you know, Ms. Haggerty reminded you, this will take approximately five days um, to uh, activate. Um, um, so fortunately, the uh, FAFSA is not open yet. It, um, it will open sometime in December. As, as I mentioned, we unfortunately don't have the release, yet, release date yet, but we will definitely let you know. Um, you can always contact us at the main phone number that I gave above in the chat or the my personal uh, work cell or my email. I'd be happy to set you guys up with a one-on-one -on -one appointment with one of our advisors to continue the process. So James, if you can keep going. So as a reminder, this is all the um, all of the various, you know, uh, uh, ways that the FSA ID is verified. So through Social Security Administration, Veterans Affairs, Department of Defense, uh, Homeland Security, et cetera. So um, it as which is why it takes a little bit of time to get that FSA ID verified. Um, keep it keep going if you can, James. And then just some just some tips, you know, like I said, definitely rem, um, remind uh, your parents if they can do it tonight. Um, um, to create one. If they do need help with us, feel free to contact us. Um, this is the first step to uh, do that FAFSA um, come December. So um, congratulations to all of you that were able to success successfully complete your FSA ID today. And, and just remember too, if your parents are uh, separated or divorced from the other parent, or if your parents are married and they file jointly, uh, you only need to have an FSID, an FSA ID for one parent. If your parents are unmarried and they live together, or if they filed two different tax returns in, in 2022, regardless of their marital status, they must each have uh, an FSA ID. Great. James, you mind going to the next slide? Okay, so this is the data exchange that I mentioned to you students. 
um, it will all be transferred from the IRS. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, you, we will no longer have to manually enter in tax return information into the FAFSA. So that is a plus. Um, it is all mm -hmm. transferred. So uh, keep going, James, if you can. And then this is um, just some additional resources, students. Um, if you have further questions, um, you can always contact the uh, Federal Student Aid uh, Information Center. Um, there's the Financial Aid Toolkit, um, the Arizona uh, FSA ID Toolkit. Um, contact us at College Depot. There are a um, variety of ways to get further help if you need it. You can always ask, ask Benji too. Yes. And this was um, Diana Matier, our financial aid uh, expert at College Depot. This was a PowerPoint she created. So thank you, Diana, for letting me borrow it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yay. So congratulations, students. Hopefully some of you or all of you were able to create that FSA ID today. All right. Megan, thank you so much for going over that with us. And yeah. then uh, let's see, next week uh, on Tuesday, uh, we will be uh, visited uh, electronically uh, or virtually by St. Olaf College. They're one of our posse colleges. And then next week, uh, we will be talking about uh, more information, like a week from today, We'll be talking about some special programs at our in-state universities, looking at student portals and going over next steps. So we'll see you a week from today. If you're an in-state student, if you're thinking about going to school out of state, hope you join us on Tuesday. Thanks everybody.